right, hello everybody. My name is Michael Herring. I work at Unity Technologies in Japan, and today I'm going to talk about the Facebook SDK for Unity. So, um, first off, I'd like to see a show of hands. Uh, who has, who, who in the audience has published a game with Unity online? And okay. And out of that, who who has post who has uh, published a social game with Unity using Facebook or some other social network? Okay, all right. And so, um, so those are kind of the audiences that the Facebook SDK for Unity targets. Um, there's uh, there's the situation where you might already have a cool Facebook game, and it has a large audience, and you want to expand that audience by bringing it to mobile like um, iOS or Android. <coughs> or you might have a cool game that you have on, on mobile and you want to bring that over to Facebook to take advantage of the social features um, and in increase your audience in that way. The Facebook SDK is designed to do both of those things. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's a library that you can download and put into any app um, on iOS and Android. And uh, with Unity, you don't have to wrap around those, uh, those, those pieces of binary code. Facebook provides something called the Facebook SDK for Unity, which is a special Unity package um, that you download and import like any other Unity asset. And it interfaces between the actual Facebook SDK and your game code. So you can still write and produce your game with Unity. Uh, without having to worry about the underlying Facebook SDK. <coughs> so why would you want to use this SDK um, and why would you want to connect your app to Facebook possibly? Well, reason number one is, is, uh, is numbers. Facebook is an absolutely huge audience. There's over one billion users on Facebook around the world and out of that 375 million of them are playing games. <clears throat> Within that number, 55 million of them have Unity Web Player installed already. And out of all those people playing games, every day, 735 million people click a link to be referred to a new game. So we're talking about a huge audience of active game players, many of which already have Unity installed. It's a proven market too. There are already some successful Unity games on Facebook. Um, for example, there's um, going from the left. There's Deer Hunter 2014, Strangelings, Dead Trigger 2, which featured highly at our GDC presentations, and The Gate. Specifically, Deer Hunter 2014 has had five million installs just on Unity, just on Facebook alone. So. There's a lot of traffic that you can get by bringing your game to Facebook. <coughs> Facebook also provides um, something called the Facebook Canvas to help your game really shine on Facebook. So if you look here at this game being played on Facebook, you've got the familiar blue bar at the top like is present on all of Facebook. And the right light colored bar has some related games and some promotional content. The rest of it is reserved for your game. So unlike the highly formatted and designed part of Facebook, like the news feed or a profile page, game developers get a whole large space to make sure that their game looks its best inside of the web browser. Facebook also has dedicated sections for you to, to host your games and have them featured inside of the application center. They treat games as a special section with its own subsections within the Facebook application center. <coughs> when activity on a Facebook game, when, it, when activity in your game happens, you can make this be broadcasted across the social network. And game posts on Facebook are normal posts. They, they appear in your mobile client's uh, activity monitor they appear on the desktop page, and with the way that you format the activity, it looks just like any other piece of content, as if someone had been tagged in a photo or liked a status. Also, they could 
attack you in a war game or send you a request for more resources or something like that. So it integrates really well with the rest of the network even while you're not playing games. <coughs> with Unity games specifically, Facebook has its own designed Unity install pages. With other plugins, you have to detect support for the game and provide a please install this plugin sort of interface. With Unity, you specify that your game is made with Unity in the Facebook um, setup process. And then anyone who does not have the Unity web player installed will see a page like this. Designed by Facebook, always sticks with their look and feel. And you can see that the icon for the game and its screenshots are here. That content you already provide to appear in the App Center. So you have to do no work to, to, to have this custom page. When activity or promotional content for your game appears elsewhere, in the, elsewhere on Facebook, there are also similar custom please download and install Unity prompts to make sure that people can quickly get Unity installed and start playing your game. The Facebook SDK for Unity also provides integration with Facebook's payment system. So this is on the Facebook Canvas because there are already payment systems on iOS and Android. It's a very simple API, fb.addpayments, and Facebook handles all the details. When you call that function, a Facebook interface appears over your game, and it's customized for the country that the user is in. It works with their payment details, and you don't have to manage any of this. You just react to it once the player makes a payment. Very easy to use. So those are the main pillars of why you might want to make your game uh, appear on Facebook. And so now we're going to walk through some of the basics in getting your game integrated. There's three major steps. You're going to want to set up your game on Facebook. They have a developer portal. And also set up your game within Unity. Then you start to perform API requests, get profile photos and friend networks. And then once the game is going on, when things happen, you can post game activity back out to the network. So first, we'll walk through setting up a game on Facebook. To do that, I will go to my web browser. And this is the Facebook developers portal. It's designed for anyone who's making any sort of uh, app. But you'll see that there's a special game section where you can see various featured games. And Unity is a, is a very big part of the game developer in experience here. So I'm going to make a new application. And when I select the category for my app, you'll see that there's various application categories, and game is its own category. But inside of that, there's subcategories, just long on most app stores. <laughs> I've been running through this demo a lot, so. All right. So, that's all I have to do to get my app set up. And this is enough information for me to go ahead and start developing my game. What I need to remember is my application ID, which I'll go ahead and copy now. But you'll see that on this page, there's various user stats. Once my game is published, I can keep track of daily activities, API stats, how much traffic my app is causing. And I can also specify what platforms my game will run on. One of the greatest things about Unity is its cross-platform support. And when you publish your Unity game on iOS or Android, in addition to also being on Facebook, you can set up very specific features, uh, a couple of which I'll go into later. So I will copy that app ID. And now inside of Unity, I've added the Facebook asset into my, into my project. And you'll see that I have a folder of assets called Facebook. You usually don't need to alter any of the content in there. That's the whole SDK. 
But what does happen is that you have a new settings menu called Facebook. And when you click edit settings, you will get the inspector here will turn into Facebook specific settings. <clears throat> now, on the Unity configuring side, there's really not much you have to do. You have to copy in the app ID in the appropriate place. And outside of that, most everything else is optional. In fact, the settings you see here for cookies, logging, status, XFBML, and frictionless requests are all very specific things that you will not have to mess with unless you have a very uh, particular kind of app or game. There are also device specific settings. When you add iOS or Android to your Facebook game, you can specify some particular settings here. In a little while, I will talk about the URL scheme suffix at the bottom for iOS games because it's to support a feature called deep linking, which is really useful. Now, when you're programming in the Facebook SDK for Unity, you're going to be using a lot of delegates. Everything, because it's a social network, everything is a network request. And so every action you perform will have a delegate called later on. And in the SDK, there's only three types of delegates, and only one of them is ever used with any frequency. The init delegate takes no arguments, returns nothing, and it's only called when the Facebook SDK has finished initializing. The hide unity delegate returns nothing, has a single Boolean argument, and whether it's true or not tells you whether unity is currently being shown. Because it's running inside of a web browser, people can switch away, and you want to make sure to know whether to stop doing network intensive requests or GPU intensive activity. And then there's the Facebook delegate. It returns nothing, and it takes one argument, the FB result. This is the workhorse of the SDK, and you're going to use it for almost everything. The FB result is a very simple data structure. Everything that comes back from the SDK is either a simple string, a texture 2D, it's already processed for you and available as a Unity texture, or in the text it could sometimes be a JSON string. And if there's ever any error, like your app is misconfigured or a network problem, then those will be null and error will instead not be null. <coughs> a small technical note is that FB result descends from iDisposable. So you only, you only use FB result inside of a delegate. And when that delegate exits, the memory can be disposed of. So if you want to keep the profile photos or clumps of JSON strings around, you have to copy those out into your own variables because the FB result object will go away. Don't save it. <coughs> As for logging in with Facebook, you know, it's, it's like using Facebook for authentication on any other application. You don't need another account. Um, users who have Facebook can just jump right in. All you have to do is call the init function. This is all inside of the FB namespace. You call the init function, and you specify your init delegate and your hide unity delegate, which are mentioned here, the very simple ones that you'll specify once and forget about. <coughs> After that, once Facebook has been initialized, you'll use login to bring up the login flow, and that will be custom for uh, whatever platform you're currently on, Android, iOS, inside of the editor, and on Canvas. This will do the appropriate thing. So let's walk through that right now. I'll show you some sample code. Inside of my simple app here, I have one class that does um, just most of the Facebook um, work here. Here I call fb.init, and I specify these two functions, toggle hiding and completed initialization, for when the appropriate actions are called. And in my case, because my game is simple, logging in and initialization both happen at the very beginning. So, once my initialization is complete, I try to log in. I specify an empty string,
because I want to use just the basic permissions that are available. And then I have this function available for once the login is complete. And once my logging in is complete, I can start to use the Facebook Graph API. <clears throat> FB.API is what you're going to use to request all of the information that's on Facebook's social network. If you go to the developers, uh, the Facebook developer portal, you will be able to see all the information because there's many different endpoints. If you've ever used any REST API, it's very similar. You request a user's name, and then you say photo or friends. It's all documented on their website, and for times when the data types that they would return to other APIs differ with Unity, you just change it where it's appropriate, like use the string type in C-sharp. For example, I have the FB API call here where I'm going to use FB.UserID. This is a string that is within the FB namespace that represents my Facebook accounts or the, the player's Facebook accounts uh, number. Then I'll ask for my photo and I'll ask for it at a large detail. I'll specify that I want to get it via the get method and I'll have a handler for it. Same thing for my friends list. And you'll see that I'm just using my Facebook username here. If you, want to, if you want to do that for debug purposes, you can. It just works exactly the same as a user ID. Let's look at one of those handlers so we can see what FB result actually looks like. <coughs> so this is friend list handler. This is what's called when I am able to get my friend list back. I deserialize the text because in this case it comes back as JSON. Facebook includes a JSON library, mini JSON, so you don't have to worry about including your own library. They know that, they guarantee that the JSON that will come back works with mini JSON. From there I can start to access certain things like their user IDs or other data. And I can start to make other Facebook requests like select a friend at random and ask for their picture in a very small format. <laughs> Putting all of this together, when I run in Facebook, when I run inside of the Unity editor, I'll be prompted for a user access token. Now, this is an editor specific feature because you shouldn't need to log in. Instead, you'll use an access token. To get it, you just click Find Access Token. And you're forwarded back to the developer portal. You'll get a temporary user token. This can expire after some time. So if you start to have network errors, just get a new access token. When I paste that in, <coughs> I'll see that Facebook has grabbed my user profile, and it also grabbed several of my friends at random. That's really, that's really all you have to do to get started with grabbing stuff on the Facebook network and using it. Once your game has started to have some activity, you're going to want to make requests of your friends, and you're going to want to also do some, uh, some social features. So to do that, first off, you can do app requests. FB.AppRequest, as you can see, takes a lot of arguments, but they're all quite simple. Message is the message that will go to your friend. Two is a list of the users that it's going to be sent to. Filters is documented on the Facebook API website, and it's just a way to exclude certain things, as is exclude IDs. Then there is data, which is a context object only for developers. The users will never see that. And the title, of course, is the title of the, of the request. And then you have a Facebook delegate, which, like always, is used for once your app request is complete. Now, app request, as you can see, is designed for you to send a request to one or more friends. It's not designed to send out content across the entire Facebook network. For that, there's the fb.feed 
API. Like the, like the app request API, it has a lot of different arguments, but in general, they're all very straightforward. The link is a link, and you can name it, you can apply a caption and descriptions, you can attach things like pictures, and you can, um, and then you have a callback that will be called when you're done requesting this. This is for putting stuff, this is for sending content to the newsfeed uh, across the whole network so that any user who happens to follow that player will see this content. Now what happens when a user clicks on one of these links? Well, say I'm on my smartphone and someone sends me a request and I tap it and then I launch someone's Unity game and I'm at the title screen. But they wanted me to send them some troops or, or lend them some gold or something. And now I have to go through the game and actually get to the right point to you know, respond to the request or maybe there's an activity feed. Deep linking lets you go around this. So as before, on the Facebook settings, you can apply a URL scheme suffix. This will let you add an extra piece of data to any request URL so that, so that you can link into a specific piece of content inside of your game. So that when your game starts, you know exactly where to go to. You set this up on a per platform basis so that if I want to be able to do a deep link on iOS, then I specify it here at the URL scheme suffix. There's a lot of other information that you can set up here per platform, so I recommend taking a look at it. Once someone's clicked your link and your game has started, you call the function fb.getdeeplink. As before, you configure it within Unity and on Facebook Dev Portal, and that's all you need to do. With the information you get back from fb.getdeeplink, you can jump forward to a different piece of content. Another thing that Facebook provides are full screen dialogues. So like you saw on the editor, a, a Facebook dialogue popped up for me to copy in my access token. I didn't have to write that, it's all provided by the SDK. And on Canvas, you get full screen dialogues for various things like posting to your wall or making requests. Right now, it's only on Canvas, but it's coming to mobile soon. They're expanding a lot of the different kinds of content that full screen dialogues work for. And so, as time goes on, these full screen dialogues will be the way that most uh, Facebook activity is done in Unity games. And speaking of the editor, <coughs> right now the released version of the Facebook SDK is 4.x series. Facebook is currently beta testing a Facebook 5.x SDK and it provides a lot of things like access to the graph data inside of the editor, cold starts on iOS so that you can um, start up better. Android login has been improved so it's a much smoother login flow for Android. And they've also updated the underlying Facebook SDK so that things are smaller and leaner. In general, the uh, experience has been vastly improved. So those are, the steps you, those are the steps you need to take to get through and start using the Facebook SDK. But Facebook also provides a lot of resources for you to get started. There's a game on Facebook's developer portal called Friend Smash. And it's actually been published. You can go and play it in the App Center. Um, it uses almost all of the Facebook APIs. So it grabs friends, it makes requests, it's integrated with the payment system. 
anything that you could do on, on the Facebook API, Friend Smash has example code to do. And that example code is open source. So you can go to their GitHub page and, follow, and, and, and find the source code for that. And then there are full length tutorials with a lot of information on how Friend Smash works and how you can get started with the Facebook SDK on the Facebook developer portal. Just follow the links marked Unity. Another thing to point out is that um, Facebook does provide support for the SDK. It's done exclusively through it's done exclusively through Stack Overflow, which is a question and answer site for programmers. <coughs> when you post a question about the Facebook SDK for Unity, you tag your question um, Facebook Unity SDK, and then the Facebook engineers who actually maintain this SDK watch that tag and will answer your question pretty quickly. <coughs> so that's a quick run through through the Facebook SDK for Unity. Um, thank you very much for your time, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Is there a microphone for questions or? Oh, okay. <laughs> 예, 페이스북 그 앱을 젠 저기 유니티로 처음 젠 작업 만들려고 그러는데요. 지금 알아보니까 그 페이스북 그 SDK 그 프라임 서티 31이라는 그 SDK 유료 앱이 있더라고요. 그래서 그거로 지금 검토를 하고 있는데요. 그 프라임 31 31을 쓰는 게 좋은 건지 아니면 저기 최근에 나온 그 유니티에 나온 페이스북 SDK를 쓰는 게더 좋은 건지 이제 그게 어떻게 할지 이제 방향을 아직 정하지 않았는데 어떤 게 좋은지 이렇게 좀 추천을 해주. 그러니까 최근에 이제 뭐 이게 아무래도 나온 거 있으면 버그라든지 뭐 아무래도 유료 프라임 31 같은 경우는 기능이라든지 여러 개 유료다 보니까 더좀잘 해주고 이럴 것 같은데요. 그래서 어떻게 하는 게 맞는 건지 이제 그게 좀 궁금합니다. 예. 그런 유료 SDK를 써야 되는 건지 아니면 새로 나온 여기 유니트 나온 그 페이스북 SDK를 써야 되는 건지 예. 예. Um, Prime 31 is not made by um, is not made by Facebook, right? It's it's not an official SDK. 예, 맞습니다. So I think um, in my, in, I don't have any experience with Prime 31, but in my experience, I would stick with the official SDKs because Facebook, in particular, um, sends updates their SDKs very quickly. I ran into a lot of um, whenever I ran into an issue developing this presentation. Like a week later, Facebook had an update that fixed it. So without knowing about the Prime 31 SDK, I would recommend going with the first party solution instead. Especially because it's free. 아, 예, 알겠습니다. 그러면 지금 강사님의 그 오늘 프로젠트 자료라든지 뭐 이런 연락처 이런 걸좀 받을 수가 있는 건지 좀 알려 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 예. 프린트 자료라든지 뭐 이런. So these um these videos should be posted um somewhere and um, if you want to trade contact info later I'm happy to send you the slides. Yeah, 네, 알겠습니다. 네, 감사합니다. <웃음> 예, 안녕하세요. 그 어, 웹플레이어에서 그 페이스북에 그 게시를 해본 적이 있는데요. 
그 페이, 네, 페이스북 SDK가 웹 플레이어용으로 많이 고려가 되고 있는지가 일단 궁금합니다. 그 페이스북 SDK is designed to work with the with the web player and canvas together. So that's actually the main use case that Facebook designs for. It works best on canvas with the web player. 어, 일례로 그 어, 웹 플레이어 내에서 그 페이스북이라도 페이스북 쪽으로 그 쿠키를 별도로 이렇게 보존을 하면서 커넥션을 유지하려고 시도를 하면 예, 기존에는 웹, 플레이, 웹 플레이어가 좀 정상적으로 동작을 하지 않았거든요. Are you talking about using the web player on a non-Facebook website, but using the Facebook SDK? Oh, 그건 아니고요. Oh, okay. So, um, there are advanced settings for cookies um, and setting the way that they're handled. So, if you're having a particular bug with um, with cookies, I'd recommend looking at the advanced settings. And if you think you found a bug or that's not handling cookies correctly, then you probably want to post it to the Stack Overflow um, forum because they'll take a look at that. Yeah, 그 질문 한 가지만 더 하겠습니다. Okay. 어, 웹플레이어에서 그 페이, 페이스북으로부터 얻어온 이미지 같은 것들이 브라우저와 이제 캐시가 공유가 되거나 그러진 않을 거라고 생각되는데요. What, what kind of image? 어, 예를 들어서 그 유저들의 프로필 이미지들을 가지고 오면 Right. So the, the Facebook SDK for Unity uses the SDK under, uses the, the normal Facebook SDK to grab the information over the network. So my understanding is that it won't use those caches. If you want to do caching, you'll want to save that information yourself in Unity. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, aside from just storing the URL and seeing if it's the same, <coughs> um, uh, you, mean, you mean changes to the URL or changes to the image? 실제 이미지가 체인지 되었을 때 바로 알수 있는 방법 같은 것은 없나요? I don't think there are APIs for that. 예, 알겠습니다. 아, 네, 안녕하세요. 어, 저, 제가 그 유니티 SK를 초창기 버전부터 쓰다가 중간에 자바 SK로 변경을 했거든요. 근데 그 변경한 이유 중에 하나가 지금 유니티 SK 같은 경우 지금 되게 불안정한 부분과 그러니까 개발자가 컨트롤 할수 없는 부분이 너무 많아서인데 이제 뭐 기본적으로 얘기를 하면 뭐 피드 같은 거라도 할 경우 뭐 자바에서는 피드 그러니까 페이스북 피드 창을 안 띄우고 그냥 
직접 다이렉트로 쓸수 있는 기능이 제공을 하는데 지금 유니티 SDK 같은 경우는 무조건 그걸 강제로 띄우는 띄우는 경우가 많더라고요. 뭐 그거 친구 초대라든가 뭐 그런 앱 리퀘스트 같은 경우도 무조건 리스트에 없으면 한번 물어보는 창을 강제로 띄워서 유저 입장에서는 되게 여러 번의 창이 뜨기 때문에 불편한 상황이 되게 많은데 이제 그거에 대해서 개선점은 없는지 궁금합니다. I know that they have improved um, several of the user experience issues on Android specifically. So maybe if you have, if there's like, for example, with the feed issue, <coughs> maybe uh, post about that, uh, ask Facebook about it and see if they're, if they're going to change it. But they have been improving the Android experience recently. Um, but I think in general the idea is to have usually one way to do things and have it, you know, uh, pretty straightforward to use. So if you have a specific way you want to interact with Facebook, the, the classic SDK might be the better way to go. Ah, 네. 그리고 한 가지만 더 여쭤볼게요. 제가 지금 개발하고 있는 건 웹플레이어로 개발을 하고 있는데 지금 제가 5.0 베타 버전을 잠깐 보니까 이제 그 기본 컨버스 앱을 기존에는 유니티에서밖에 사용을 못 했는데 뭐 거기서 좀더 다른 걸로 뭐 광고라든가 아니면 다른 뭐 페이스북 뭐 좋아요 창이라든가 이런 걸할수 있는 여지를 만들어 줬는데 예 제가 볼때그 인터페이스가 많이 불편해 보이거든요. 뭐 아직 정식 버전은 아니지만 이제 그 부분에 대해서는 좀더 상세하게 알수 있는 부분이 있을까요? Yeah, like 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 every question you might have about the Facebook SDK, it's definitely um, a good idea to go ask the Facebook engineers on Stack Overflow about it, <coughs> and they can uh, they can give you more specific information about that. Ah, 네 감사합니다. All right. Um, 여러분 감사합니다. <웃음>